Eight have been arrested in London after a crowd estimated by trade unions to be as much as half a million took to the streets over British government public spending cuts of £80 billion. Serious rioting in the city's main shopping areas and Trafalgar Square went on until the early hours. Violent chaos followed Saturday's largely peaceful march as radical extremists attacked banks and shops with paint, fireworks and smoke bombs. Banks were chief targets due to anger over the credit crunch and huge bailouts, with activists furious there's money for big business and military campaigns, but not for public services like health and education. Unions and the opposition say the cuts will destroy essential services and jobs, but ministers insist they're quite vital to reduce Britain's huge deficit. The UK's largest protest in eight years came just a day after another violent, angry demonstration in Brussels. From there, Daniel Bushel reports. No to more layoffs, no to pay cuts, no to late retirement. The message from angry demonstrators pushed back with water cannon and pepper spray by riot police. The protesters tried to get through to EU leaders, meeting in Brussels to slash spending. This money was made to, to, be, to, to be used for social security. It was made to, to be used for the social health, not to help the bank. So when you have the European Union that wants us to, make, to take plans because of the crisis they cause. Across Europe, voters are saying no to more austerity measures. Portugal's prime minister quit after parliament voted down a fresh round of cuts. The country has three months left to repay almost 10 billion euro at a time when its sovereign credit rating has been cut. Analysts say the only option left is national default to tell lenders the country can't pay back its loans or accept an EU bailout similar to Greece and Ireland. It hasn't happened in the West since the Second World War, but the longer you postpone this necessary evil, um, the more costly it is, uh, it is going to be. At the same time, military intervention in Libya is costing hundreds of millions of euro. Many are furious at what they see as an unnecessary and expensive campaign. Somebody asked the Chancellor of the Exchequer, the Finance Minister, about the financing of this. And I think the overwhelming sense that you got from it was um, among the public in Britain was scepticism. With millions unemployed across Europe, people are losing patience with politicians who seem out of touch with reality. An increasingly familiar sight on streets of the EU as government belt tightening leaves growing numbers out of work. It begs the question, is now the right time to spend the money available on wars abroad? Daniel Bushell, RT, Brussels. And European Parliament member and the leader of the UK Independence Party, Nigel Farage, says people across the continent have every right to feel angry over the cuts at home while their governments throw money around abroad. We've had British troops on the ground in Afghanistan now for over 10 years. I don't think there's any appetite for us getting involved in foreign wars where we cannot directly see our own national interests being threatened and where, frankly, if we go in to support the rebels, we don't even know who they are or what they stand for or what they want. I don't think anybody has thought this through. And if they are going to put ground troops in, then I think they're going to find in all the member states involved in this a real strong level of opposition. When people see uh, cuts in frontline services for whatever reasons, uh, when people see their retirement ages going up, when people see uh, the taxes, both direct and indirect, that they're paying going up, uh, they have a right to question. What on earth are we doing getting involved in an open-ended commitment in terms of war with Libya that could cost us goodness knows what else? I do think the two are very closely interlinked. And I also feel, as Portugal is about to topple over as the next Eurozone country re requiring a bailout, that that is actually going to cost each British taxpayer about £400. And that actually the biggest effect on our pockets this week wasn't the Chancellor's budget, but it was the fact that the Portuguese government fell and they're about to be bailed out. So I think people have every reason to be pretty angry that they see their own costs at home going up, their services being cut, and money being thrown overseas in all sorts of projects that they wouldn't necessarily support. You'll find more news features and analysis on our website. That's RT.com. Here's a taste of what's online right now.